Cassandra, the vintage arcade gal here. We have a new game that we just picked up last night. I wanted to take a minute to do a quick kind of walk about it um, while I'm studying for midterms for school uh, because my brain is turning too mush and I'd much rather talk about this stuff than talk about psychology. So um, Rally X, um, which was originally developed by Namco Japan, who developed all sorts of very famous games like Pac-Man and Galaga, and was released by Midway here in the United States. Now, uh, the interesting thing about Rally X is that a lot of people know the story about how at the American Amusement trade show, they showcased several upcoming games. They showcased Rally X. Midway also debuted uh, Pac-Man, and then in Williams developed uh, a game called Defender, which you're probably familiar with. They showcased it at this show as well, and then Atari presented Battlezone. And out of the four, uh, most people thought that Rally X was going to be the next huge game, was going to be the next Space Invaders, was going to be a mega hit. Of course, we know that Pac-Man went to become a worldwide phenomenon and sold hundreds of thousands of copies and became a cultural icon. And that's a whole another video to talk about why Pac-Man became so huge. Battlezone was a big hit for Atari. I think they sold almost 20,000 Battlezones, maybe even more. And Defender was one of the biggest games ever, even though it was difficult. I mean, people at this trade show thought Defender was too difficult to be popular. Players turned out really d dig the difficulty and like the challenge of the game. And uh, Defender sold over 55,000 copies. Rally X, however, which was like the star of the show, didn't really do so great, and according to Todd Tucky from TNT Amusements, who I trust more than most since he's been around for so long, they made very few Rally Xs, and it just didn't take off, and compared to the other games that we mentioned, actually, there's only one official home version of the game during the Classic Era, it was for the MSX computer in Japan, although there's a famous kind of copy bootleg version of it called Radar Rat Race for the Commodore VIC-20 and Commodore 64. So what's the deal with Rally X? Well, Rally X is actually a lot like Pac-Man. If we come over here, we'll kind of look. All right, so if we point it up and uh, look up here, and we have these real tiny start buttons and just a regular four-way joystick and then a smoke screen button. And so I will not do very well because again, I'm not very awake. So you drive your little car around, looks kind of like a little doom buggy, and you collect these flags. And if you see there's these little red cars trying to get you, very much like the ghost in Pac-Man. If I hit the smoke screen button, it causes them to kind of fumble around and they can't get you temporarily. But to get you, you lose a life. Bang. Now the other thing you can run into here are little rocks. Let me see if I can find a little rock. That's the doubler. That's the special flag. Here's a rock. You run into that, you also lose a life. And then if you see over here, there's a radar that shows you where the flags are and where the enemy cars are located as well. And it has this little background music. It's kind of turned down low right now. This is actually the first game with background music. It also has a bonus stage. I think once you hit the third stage, there's a stage where the cars, the enemy cars, don't move. They just allow you to get all the flags and try not to run into anything. It was the first game with a bonus stage as well. So pretty neat, pretty interesting and innovative. I think this game is fantastic. It's always been one of my favorites. I think it didn't do well because before Rally X, before 1980, there were a large series of overhead racing games, from mostly from Atari, um, that were very similar in the way they looked and not so much the way they played. Games like Sprint. Uh, there was an indie series of games. There's a game called Monte Carlo. There's a game called Superbug, uh, which are all very similar in layout. And I think people saw this and thought it was a very similar kind of game. Where Pac-Man was so innovative and new, and of course like Battlezone had almost like a pseudo 3D wireframe. You know, before polygons were even really thought of in video games, it was kind of the predecessor of that. So that did very well. And of course, Defender was very challenging, very fast-paced, and had that great scrolling. So. Let's take a look at the cabinet itself real quick. Um, it's a survivor, what I would consider to be a survivor, where it's it's all original from what I can tell. 
it's a little worse for wear, obviously. It's, you know, it's a little beat up. The, the paint's looking pretty shabby. This is a decal, which is what it was originally. It's the original decal. Uh, they didn't paint these on. They just kind of stuck them on there. And this is probably the only tanned color game I can think of from the classic era with orange tea molding. I do like this little graphic, even though they pretty much use it everywhere. Um, it reminds me of the Rat Fink cartoons, little Drax or cartoons and things like that. This amazing font. Um, even down here, it's, it's such a product of the late 70s in its design aesthetic, which is the color choices and everything. It's fantastic. There should be another graphic down here that's missing, again, of the same racer from the marquee and the side art. Obviously, the, the marquee, if you see, um, it's got some little doinks inside. It's starting to flake. Uh, the bezel is in worse shape. It's really flaking. The paint's coming off. These are silk screen from the back, originally from the factory, so we're going to have to get a replacement of this. This is kind of too far gone to kind of disguise. This control panel is metal with a little plastic overlay. These are available from a lot of great third-party sources of reproductions. We'll take this off, sand this down, repaint it. This cabinet is extraordinarily similar to cabinets uh, that Midway made for games like Galaga and Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man and a couple of other games, Galaxy. And the main difference, though, if you look on the side of this game, it's not very deep. In fact, we measured it compared to the Miss Pac-Man, and it's six inches less in depth than the Miss Pac-Man. Someone had mentioned online, um, in response to something I put on earlier when we got the game, that a lot of that was probably the orientation of the monitor being horizontal rather than vertical, so the vertical game needs a little bit more depth to make sure the neck doesn't get whacked compared to horizontal because the way the monitor sits, it doesn't need as much depth. So pretty neat because it's, you don't really notice it, but even in the annals of other upright games, horizontal or vertical, it's not very deep. It's uh, definitely very different. Let's take a look inside the back just for a second. So if we look in here, it's a pretty typical arrangement for these games. This is an Electra Home Geo 7 monitor. Uh, Midway seem to use these monitors in a lot of games. Uh, Tron had them, the Pac-Man games had them. Uh, this one needs to be recapped desperately. Uh, it's pretty clean, though all things being considered, you have to keep in mind this is almost a 40 year old game and it doesn't look a lot's been done to it. Somebody did this plug arrangement with a household plug. Um, I don't really know why they would do that. So we're gonna, we're gonna fix that and make that a little cleaner. If we look down where this is the CPU of the game, it's a two board system. It has its own special harness. It's not JAMA or anything like that later. It's like somebody capped it at some point. This board behind is actually currently not connected to anything. This is a secondary power supply board. Originally, there was this power supply board and this one down here that is now missing. Uh, some of the previous owner we purchased for an upgraded to a modern switching power supply which is much more reliable. Uh, so I don't really have a problem. Some people who are purists get really upset if you don't rebuild the original power supply. The only games I ever do that to religiously are the Williams games and the Atari games because their power supplies, in my opinion, are very reliable. So the original instructions, you can see it's pretty worse for wear. <laughs> um, you know, all of the little decals are just kind of falling off. These things become unglued pretty easily. Now, on Williams games, you can see the serial number by two different methods. Up here in the upper left-hand corner, there's a number imprinted into the actual cabinet. And unfortunately, this game took a whack right where that number is, and you can barely see what's left of the number. But if we go down here inside the cabinet, we have the receipt from the cabinetry shop, which shows this is game 1508, so it's number 1508, the sequence of how they were made. Have no idea how many they made. I'm gonna guess between the upright version and the cabaret, the smaller cabinet size of the cocktail, probably less than 5,000 of these were ever made. And since Rally X did not have the longevity of a game like Pac-Man as far as popularity, I'm willing to bet a lot of these got converted. And there was very few left that are original 
in what I like to call unmolested, like this one, where it's mostly all original. Someone hasn't tried to fix it and do a bad job, which, you know, I've talked about in some of my other videos. This is kind of the way you love to find them as a collector if you like to restore them back to the way they're supposed to be just because someone hasn't tried to fix it, someone hasn't put a multi-game in it, someone hasn't tried to improve it with an LCD monitor, which is not an improvement, by the way. You should always try to rebuild a CRT monitor. Uh, it's just a very different experience. So that's it. You know, unfortunately, if you look behind me at these other two projects, uh, this one, which is going to be the... Uh, subject of a rather large involved video that we're going to do that I'm going to keep secret for now. Right now it looks like a disaster, but trust me, in about two months it's going to look amazing. Uh, it's just a matter of having time to put it all together. Um, we also have a couple other projects that are in the mix. We have a Moon Patrol uh, upright. We have an elevator action cocktail that we're working on and the Simpsons in the back, which for the last year has been the redheaded stepchild of the collecting uh, projects and has never seen any attention unfortunately but we promise we'll we'll get to it eventually but i'm really excited about this is a very unique game it's great to see one that again has not been messed or monkeyed with makes a really good restoration plus it's always nice when you pick these things up and they're actually working and playable it makes a world of difference because you don't have to go into too much it's more of making it better rather than figure out what the heck is wrong with it uh, excited to have it. Um, it's always been one of my favorites, Rally X. It's a fun game. It's, uh, I think, a little overlooked. You see it now in a lot of these um, best of hit collections you can buy for your, your Xbox or your PlayStation or all your Game Boy systems. But as a standalone game, you really don't hear much about Rally X anymore. And I was always surprised as a kid that it never really came out like for the Atari 2600, because I think the 2600 could probably handle a pretty good conversion of this game. It's not overly complicated. So there you go, there's our pickup. I'm gonna go back to studying. Uh, thanks for watching our videos always, and happy hunting out there. Ah.